Host Nora McInerney is back for season two of The Head Start, Embracing the Journey, a podcast from Ruby Studio and Abvi. In each episode, Nora has real conversations with real people living with chronic migraine to see how they took action to understand this disease. So jump into the conversation for season two, a show that creates a little more space for empathy and understanding in such a complicated world. There shouldn't be so much hesitation around asking questions and asking for help. So don't wait. Join the Head Start Embracing the Journey and learn a little more about life with chronic migraine. Summer is upon us, and whatever you have going on, a vacation, a staycation, a summer wedding, well, Macy's has you covered. If you need summer dresses, matching sets, volume sleeve tops, wedges, straw-crafted bags, I mean, really, they have what you need head to toe. I'm talking Levi's, Dolce Vita, Lacoste, and more. So shop summer must-haves at Macy's. Go to Macy's.com slash own your style. Again, that's Macy's.com slash own your style. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids to a classroom? Homes.com knows that these are all the things that you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. Something I for sure love having in my home is super clean countertops, and I love when it smells good, too. So you can bring the vacation vibes to your home with coconut-scented Clorox Sentiva. It smells like coconut, cleans like Clorox, and feels like energy with a refreshing scent that'll transform your space into a tropical island retreat and give you a powerful clean. No plane ticket required. Unleash your self-expression with the enchanting coconut fragrance of Clorox Sentiva. You can get yours at a nearby retail store, also available in grapefruit or lavender scents. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to The Fifth Thing. This is the bonus episode of The Four Things Podcast where I typically share emails that you've sent in, but today's episode is a little different than usual. Instead of going over four emails, I just decided to talk about a subject that I get a lot of emails about, which is therapy. Licensed therapist Catherine Defada is on with me and we talk about the rise in people going to therapy because of 2020, lifting the stigma of therapy, things you can do if you can't afford therapy, and how to best go about finding a therapist. Now, this was originally something I recorded with Kat as a thing for the Thursday episodes, but I really do get so many emails regarding this topic. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to put this as a bonus episode as something that you can listen to isolated. It's focusing on therapy and should hopefully help answer some questions that you have, or if anything, just make you feel less alone. But before we get into that, I always start off Tuesday episodes with a quote. And today's is from my friend, Sunday. I'm sharing something that she texted me that her therapist told her. So when she sent it to me over text, I thought, oh, I'm just going to grab this and make this my little quote for today because it's perfect. She didn't know I was going to be quoting it here. It's not why she sent it to me, but I think that you might appreciate it. She said, my therapist always tells me to think of emotions like logs down a river. You see them, acknowledge them, and let them continue down the river. That simple metaphor has helped me so much. So thank you, Sunday, for that metaphor. And it really is funny that she texted that to me just before I was about to record this intro. It really was perfect timing. So thankful for her therapist sharing that with her. And I want to pass it along to you because you too might be dealing with a lot of emotions that you need to acknowledge and then send them on down the river. And then shout out to Sunday who owns the Mockingbird shop, little boutique in downtown Southern Pines, North Carolina. So if you're ever in the Southern Pines area, which is close to Pinehurst or Fort Bragg, then you have to go to her shop because it's adorable. All right, well, let's get into my chat with Kat about therapy and how if you're needing it more than ever right now, you are not alone. Enjoy. Okay, I brought in an expert for this thing, Kat Tafada, licensed therapist, host of her own podcast, You Need Therapy, because I saw a headline 
that one in six Americans entered therapy for the first time in 2020. So we all, we all know that 2020 was stressful. I mean, 2021 is already stressful and it's only been three weeks, but that was according to a new study. But I, I think that we maybe underestimated just how bad it was because one in six, that's a lot. It's a lot. It's not just therapy. It's therapy for the first, first time. time. So that means they finally were like, okay, this got me. I'm going to therapy. Uh, yeah. And that's, I think what I was going to say is it's not even that we didn't realize it was so bad. It's that it is to the point where people are like, I can't put this off anymore. Like I've got to do something. Yeah. Majority of people listed COVID-19 as the catalyst for mm-hmm. them seeking treatment And then also it was a big year for medication. Mm -hmm. So the research also found that 15% of patients begin taking medication for mental health issues for the first time Mm -hmm. ever. Because think about how anxious everybody is and then the level of depression because people are stuck at home. They're not with people. We're not having conversations live face-to-face as much. We're not getting that interaction. Everybody's scared about what's going to happen. So the amount of anxiety and just depression that I have even seen and even in clients that like that was not their thing has been crazy to watch over the past year. I'm reading Maybe You Should Talk to Someone, which is an awesome book written by a therapist where she's sharing stories, which by the way, how is she allowed to share these stories? Please break it down for me. And quickly, I'll just tell people, yes, you should read it. We don't have it. It's a- my fi- one of my favorite books. Yeah. If you're thinking right now, should I read it? Yes, you should. If you're looking for a new book and you could even download it on Audible, listen to it. I actually have the physical copy and the Audible. So sometimes I go back and forth. The other night I was so, I wanted to read because I I want it for my brain to keep me sharp, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, it's, it's an exercise. <laughs> but I was just having a moment where I also just wanted to read, but I wanted someone to read to me. So is this lame? I turned on my Audible app and then I flipped to the exact page that it was playing. So I had the audio going and I read it with my eyeballs. I love that. That's like it, how it was in like fifth grade. You'd like popcorn reading. <laughs> <laughs> so that was me at 39 <laughs> reading to myself with my audio thing. But it's such a great book, but she shares stories from her office. So from her patients' lives, but then she also had a a life moment, something that sent her, not COVID-19, but sent her to therapy. Mm -hmm. So then she shares what it was like for her being on the other side of the couch and what things her therapist would say in their interaction. So it's this nice back and forth of like being the therapist and then being the patient. What do you call your patient? Client. Client. And then being client. Mm-hmm. I guess you're a patient if you, is that a psychiatrist? Well, no, I think a lot of people c- might say patient. I just say client. Patient seems like a hospital to me. Okay, true. So she goes back and forth. But my main question to you as a therapist is how is she allowed to tell stories from the office? She probably, one, got consent from them and any identifying information she would have changed. So the essence of who they are and the essence of their story is there, but it's not the same exact story. Because I'm I'm really, I'm not done with the book yet, but I'm really invested in one of the, it's, he's not even a character because he is real, but I guess his name has been changed, but John. Yeah. I'm assuming that like the show that he, like all of the stuff that she's saying is true, The like the storyline. Yeah. So John worked as a big time TV producer on some huge show yeah. that was a weeknight show, but I don't know. And it's a true story. But at first, you don't like him. Oh, and this is kind of like you. just makes you yeah. think of people in general. When you're not looking at the behavior and you start to look at the, the emotion mm-hmm. or the hurt behind it, right? And so it's a beautiful example of maybe just even viewing a coworker or mm-hmm. a stranger that's having a bad day or that you have a weird interaction mm-hmm. with or a friend or a family member. It's like doesn't mean you have to just be there for everybody by any means, but you can have more empathy because at first this guy just seems like a jerk. But then as things start to open up in therapy, you realize, wow, he's not like he's got some hurts and Mm -hmm. this is why he's doing this behavior. Mm -hmm. 
And if he could just work through it, Mm -hmm. he'll come out on the other side. So I'm kind of rooting for John. Yeah, you should root for him. (laughs) Because he's not a likable character. And there's we all have people that aren't likable. And like I work with people that might not be likable. But one of the things that I believe about everybody is everybody has icky stuff about them. Like that turns us off or just we don't like or that isn't necessarily quote unquote good. But everybody does have good about them too. And as a therapist, and I think as humans, we should all look to see, okay, we we can point out and pick and feel the ick parts, but we also have to find the redeeming qualities of people and love them for those redeeming qualities rather than hate them for the ones we, the things we don't like. And that's what she does as a therapist with that character is she's like, I'm going to find the redeeming qualities because I know this person isn't a quote bad person. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting, too, how you get her perspective as a therapist. So now I'm looking at you, like, thinking "Hmm, (laughs) sometimes when you're in the chair, she's just honest that sometimes her clients are saying something, and inside her head, she wants to scream at them Mm -hmm. or be like, don't do that. Mm You, Oh, that's the stupidest thing Mm -hmm. ever. But then professionally, you know your role and your lane and your place. But there's got to be times where things are just kind of unraveling. But you're not their savior. You can. And it doesn't create change in people if we just tell them what to do all day. Exactly. Because then they're going to rely on us for the rest of our lives, which there's a character in that book that's addicted to to the therapist. And I said savior like very loosely just because people can view their therapist in that way Mm -hmm. of like, I do whatever you say. And really, we're our own people, and we've got to put in the work. And I'm thankful to see that a lot of people are going to therapy, but also it breaks my heart because it just means that there's more hurting. But I think that the hurt was probably there for a lot of people, but what 2020 did was bring it to the surface. Right. And, you know, I've had a hard time with that, too, because as a therapist, I started getting all of these inquiries and emails and phone calls, and that's great from, like, a business standpoint, sure. And it's also great because I want to help people. But it broke my heart, too, of like, oh, my gosh, I'm not the only therapist. All of these therapists, all my friends, we're all we all have wait lists and we're trying to shove more people in. But then we have to find the balance between I can't see 30 people in a week else. I'll be good to nobody. And so, yeah, it's great because I think people are awake now and and they're getting help for things. And some people I believe a lot of us have to reach our bottom before we will reach out for help. And that is awesome. But it's also sad that there's that many people that are hurting in the world. Right. Which is back to my original, why I even brought up, you should talk to someone was just thinking of the weight you as a therapist Mm -hmm. and all therapists out there have to carry of everybody's burdens all the time, 2020 or not. Like that's just been a therapist thing. Like I don't know how sometimes you go home at night and shut off all the feelings that had to be felt. Because now I even see how through the book, how invested you become in these people. But again, it's your passion and you were trained in- Boundaries. There's boundaries, Boundaries. yes. All right, you gotta love a place that makes shopping for gifts super easy because heads up, Father's Day is June 16th and Macy's has got you covered. Their ultimate gift guide makes shopping for the dad or the dad figure in your life super easy. You can shop by price, 25 and under, 50 and under, 100 and lux. You can shop by category, like cologne, watches, leather goods. You can even shop by gift lists. Like if your dad loves to grill, then shop for grill master things. If your dad loves to golf, then you can go to the gift list that is for the golfer. I mean, really, Macy's has thought of it all. If you have a tech-savvy dad, voila, Macy's Gift Finder, again, has you covered with that. Top gifts include Beats headphones, JBL portable speakers, Nintendo Switch, and more. Top brands such as Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Polo Ralph Lauren, Columbia, and more. Really, Macy's has it all, so don't be a last-minute shopper. Father's Day is June 16th. Make sure to check out Macy's.com slash gift finder to find a unique gift they'll love. I don't want to waste my time taking vitamins that aren't really going to do much for me. Like, I want research. I want to know, like, hey, this is actually doing something for my body. And Ritual knows this. That's why they conducted the research. They've done clinical trials on their Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. The results... Well, it increased vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in just 12 weeks. And as a woman, I want 
healthy vitamin D levels and omega-3 levels. And all I got to do is take my ritual essential for women 18 plus multivitamin every morning. I take them on an empty stomach, but sometimes if I forget, I may take them in the afternoon. It's really up to you when you want to take them. There's nine key nutrients in two delayed release capsules. And what the delay release capsules does for us is it optimizes our body's absorption of these nutrients. It's gentle on the empty stomach. Like I said, I can take it first thing in the morning and I'm totally fine. And with a minty essence in every bottle, it actually makes taking your vitamins enjoyable. No more shady business. Ritual is essential for women. 18 plus is a multivitamin that you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month at ritual.com slash four things. Start ritual or add essential for women 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash four things for 25% off. From searching online to asking your friends and family, there are a lot of ways to look for jobs. But have you considered finding your next job through a staffing company? Your local Express Employment Professionals team is your one connection to endless job opportunities. With just one application, they can help you find a job at a company that fits your needs. Visit ExpressPros.com. And as always, Express never charges job seekers a fee. Express knows when companies are hiring, offers benefits and competitive pay. And in just one interview, they are prepared to present you to multiple companies who fit your needs. Express Employment Professionals places people in all kinds of jobs, including everything from customer service to warehouse jobs to accounting and IT roles. Let Express help you. And remember, there is never a fee for job seekers. Go to expresspros.com to get started and discover for yourself what it's like to have support in your job search. You can also start through the Express Jobs app. Download it today to search jobs, apply, and contact your local Express office. In every pair of Tacova's boots, you can expect handmade quality, first wear comfort, and timeless Western style. A great pair of Western boots will elevate a casual look or add a refined flair that'll draw both eyes and compliments. Tacova's boots are always made from premium bovine and exotic leathers, and with occasional resoling, they will last a lifetime. Now, the best way to shop for boots is at your local Tacova store, where you're going to be greeted by the smell of fresh leather and a friendly smile. So come on in, grab a cold one, get fitted by a pro, and shop the latest styles. They also offer custom branding and leather stamping if you want to personalize your boots or fine leather goods. And stay cool in a short sleeve moisture wicking pearl snap. Or make your own shade with one of their classic straw hats, new in both men's and women's styles. And if you're planning to hit the road, Tacova's ever-growing lineup of rugged and full-grain leather bags will get you where you're headed in style, and they are built to last decades. Visit tacovas.com. That's T E C O V A S.com. And don't go gently, y'all. So, the reason why I also wanted to bring this up is because I want you to know that if you're thinking about getting therapy, that it's okay. Mm-hmm. And you should do it. If there's anything inside of you that is thinking there's a stigma attached to it or your family raised you a certain way where that's not something that you do or emotions are off limits mm-hmm. and what? Like the work can be done and, and there can be healing and there's hope. You know, there's hope and you don't need to worry about the judgment or shame from anybody else. I know that might be hard because it's easy for me to say because my family doesn't care. They're like, oh yeah, therapy's great, blah, blah, blah. But some people come from a place where it's like, uh-uh, no. Yeah. Or you may have a spouse that's like, nope, mm-mm, not going to go. And yeah, I want you to know that there's hope. And then two, if therapy is not something you can do financially or you don't have access to it, or you're still trying to dip your toe in the water, Mm -hmm. there's books that might be out there pertaining to what you're going through. Kat has a podcast called You Need Therapy. There's probably other related type podcasts that you could listen to where you can consume helpful information that can help at least get you going in that direction, whatever your roadblock is for you as to why you can't do it. Because I get it. It's not attainable for everybody. Yes. To to all of that, I am somebody who's always said there doesn't have to be something wrong with you to go to therapy. I think in the older generations, therapy was looked at as like, 
oh my gosh, like they, they must have some chaos or something horribly wrong with them to go to therapy. And that's just not true. There's everyday people that you would think that their lives are perfect or in therapy. You don't even have to have a mental illness to go to therapy. You can just go because you want, because therapy is about getting to know who you are and finding out how to have freedom and being that person. So I do want to say that to the people who are like, oh, I also have wanted to reach out too, but like it feels bad or wrong. It's not. I think that asking for help is probably the most courageous thing you could do in the world is saying like, I can't do this on my own. And then what advice do you have for people when they are trying to, I mean, we have people all across the country listening. So do you just look at Yelp reviews or? Well, so there's, okay, there's two parts to this. Cause one is if I do have the means whether that's through insurance or whether that's through just like I can pay for therapy, if, if that's something that's available to me, then the best thing to do is if you know anybody who's been to therapy before, ask them. Like I think word of mouth because therapy is so relational. It is so relational. And so if you trust somebody who you know has gone to therapy, ask them like, do you like your therapist? Would she have any recommendations for somebody? Does she have any space open? And don't worry about if your friend goes, I mean, I'm assuming that it's going to be an ethical therapist. Like I've shared therapists before with friends and never had an issue. Mm -hmm. I'm sure sometimes, I don't know, depending on if friend stuff comes up, it might be awkward for the therapist, but the therapist never said anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, the therapist basically denies the fact, similar to our family doctor, like that would see my mom when she was sick or my, like anything. He'd be like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, no, I know you were just with my mom. And he's like, I can neither confirm nor deny. deny. (laughs) And so that's also how the therapist thing would work. So if your friend does have a good one, I don't think you would be like, oh no, I can never go to my friend's therapist because what is the protocol? So it depends. Like I would never, there's HIPAA. Yes. But I would never see like two people that live together okay because it can get messy I will say that like so, roommates yes I would never see roommates or even I'm not a couples therapist but I would never see a husband and a wife as my individual clients you would either do couples starting out together there would be a couple and the couple is the client or I'm seeing the wife some people might operate differently but that's how I am mm-hmm. So you can ask word of mouth. You can go to something called Psychology Today, which is a website, and you can just Google your area, what you are struggling with, and things will pop up and you can read their bios. I will say anybody can say they work with anything on that website. So I, a lot of people just click all the boxes. <laughs> so be careful. Maybe go to their website and read their actual website, see if there are any reviews on Google. In case or- you want a, a therapist that specializes in, in something. something. And then like like cat specializes in in eating disorder. So, and then also once you schedule a session and you go, like if you go a couple of times and you don't mesh with your therapist, that's okay. You can tell them that and they can give you referrals for somebody who might meet your needs better. And And there's we're not, if you're a good therapist, your feelings are, that's fine. If I'm not the fit for you, it's like not, it's not me. The other thing is if therapy is not something that is available to you right now for whatever reason, there are plenty of podcasts that are good. I would look for one with a licensed therapist because anybody can have a self-help podcast. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I would like to say that I don't like to clap. I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm, yeah, they can. (laughs) And I'm thinking some people might be like, oh, well, Amy, you think you're a self-help podcast. And I don't. But you bring everything. Experts on I, you've you're so good at that. Well, but and but sometimes I do feel like I put advice out there again in the infancy of the podcast, which is not that old. But I would say in the first year, I probably did some unhealthy things, probably more body and food wise that I wasn't aware of because I, I was in a different place. And now that I'm in recovery from my disordered eating, and I'm very aware of kind of trigger things, I don't want to be a part of that yeah. culture anymore. But also, I do want to bring helpful tools and information. But yes, I try to be a platform where I bring on the experts. I'm not on here preaching to you. Or if I share something with you, it's something that I have come across that was helpful Mm -hmm. to me that I think might be helpful to you. But in no way do I think, I don't know. I think you do a great to say that. And I'm not looking for like a. But I I want to say it affirmation or validation. I want to say, I think that you do a great job on here and outweigh staying in your lane. I think you do a fabulous job. When you answer questions and you answer your emails, you've even asked me to answer questions or you've asked other people to answer questions because you're like, this is not my lane. I need help with this. So I think that it's okay to start a podcast and want to help people. I wish we had more people doing that. 
but I'm just saying if you're looking for a specific, that- you don't have an, a, a podcast for anxiety and you're just like, oh, I read this article on anxiety. You might have read an article on anxiety and you shared on four things, but that's not the whole platform of your- And even without way, I would never co-host it without, like Lisa's a registered dietitian yeah. and has made it her life's mission to yes. be in that space. So yeah. I- do that because I I feel comfortable doing that because I have an expert as a Mm co-host. And then even this Saturday, Lisa isn't on it, but you joined me as the co-host for it because I thought, again, I just don't feel like I should do it alone. I need to have an expert join me to talk about celebrities and people in the public eye and how we need to stop looking to them for what we should look like. Even though I feel equipped to talk about that because I've walked through that, I've done that Mm -hmm. to myself and then projected it onto Mm -hmm. others, but I still wanted to have you as an expert with me. Which I love. Yeah. So that'll be on Saturday's episode of Outweigh, the podcast we have on disordered eating, which a new episode goes up every Saturday. So if you want to subscribe to that, because maybe your thing that you need help with is food and body image stuff. Maybe it's addiction. Maybe it's something else. What were you saying about addiction before we hit recording that something about 2020 was just a crazy year of people going to? uh, Well, I was telling you when... I was looking at that article that, yeah, this year, 2020, I've never sent as many clients or referred as many clients to residential treatment, whether it was for their eating disorder or addiction or depression than I did in that year ever. And I've been working in this field for eight years. And this was by far, I've referred more people that have gone this year, but even the people that have actually gone, because it's hard to get somebody to go to treatment. Crazy. I did. I mean, but good for them. Good for, for them for doing it because that's really not good for easy them at all. And if you're someone that might be in that position, like we want to encourage you, if that's the next step for you, I want to like just lift the shame off of like asking for help, no matter how big of the mm-hmm. ask it is. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a once a week therapy, yeah. a once a month therapy, or a thirty day treatment, yeah, like there should be no shame, which I feel like we still have some of that. So thank you for yeah being a part of lifting the yeah. the shame yeah. and y'all can reach out to Kat. Her Instagram is at Kat, K-A-T dot Defata, D-E-F-A-T-T-A. There you go. Okay. Well, thank you, Kat. You're and welcome. we'll see you next time you join me when I need <laughs> an expert in therapy. <laughs>
Ooh, yum. And how you get the most out of select can't miss events. With access to the Centurion Lounge, Resi Priority Notified, and Amex card member benefits at select events, you'll have to share. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex.